The following is a mechanically reproduced announcement, previously recorded from a live scheduled program on 24.7 The Stream. This is not a live broadcast. All guests, callers, and hosts granted 24.7 The Stream permission to be recorded. This program may contain strong language or topics not suited for younger listeners. Parental discretion is advised. Thank you for listening to 24.7 The Stream. Welcome to Inform Nation. This is your host, Alex Gabriel. And your co-host, David Sick. Happy Monday, everyone. Here we are, April 20th, 2015. Happy. Bringing you Inform Nation. Happy 420 to Happy everyone. Happy 420, there. everybody out there. Anybody <laughs> listening in, partaking in the festivities. <laughs> Hope you uh, enjoy the show today. But uh, we're going to hit some serious topics today. Talking about you are what you eat. That's big. It is big. And... Um, you know, it goes back to a long time ago. They used to say, you know, I, I read this thing talking about, you know, if you ate shark for seven days straight, you would start acting a little bit more like a shark. Or if you ate like a lion, you know, for a couple of days going, you'd start to get more of the lion traits. And that's kind of how back in ancient civilizations, they thought about their food. They kind of embodied what the animal was like in themselves when they ate. Mm -hmm. So I believe that's where the, the term came from, you are what you eat. I mean, that also goes into... Uh how the food is even processed through your body, how your body absorbs and like the food becomes part of you as you're eating it because that's how your body lives is through the food, right? Oh, yeah. So when you eat that certain food, whatever it is, you're going to gain traits from that certain food that become part of you. Mm -hmm. And that's why, you know, we should always take praise in actually eating the food that we actually have because, you know, we should always sit down, sit down before a meal and, you know, say prayers for the animal that gave up its life to kind of have, to help you with your life. It's like the energy from that animal was put into your body now, and you get to kind of have that animal live through you, so that animal kind of helped you become who you are today. Oh, definitely. And uh, we're talking about you are what you eat, and last week we were talking about they, and I kind of want to tie in the two subjects here really quick, uh, just a little snippet, is uh, what do they eat? And they are probably eating good, healthy foods, more of a uh, paleolithic sort of lifestyle. I'm telling you, they are not going through the McDonald's drive-thru. No, they a are not. times a week. No, they're not going through the McDonald's drive-thru. They're not going through Burger King, you know, White Castle, you know, Taco Bell, you know, any of those fast food big McMurder. chains. McMurder. McMurder, uh, Wendy's, any of those. They're not going through those. Reason being is that food is filled with chemicals. Uh, there was a study done that uh, took the top 10 fast food companies and uh, pretty much analyzed their burger patties and ended up finding out. I heard about that. Yeah, yeah. Through, uh, through the 10 companies, actually, 5 to 12% of their burgers was actually real meat. Think about that. Think about that. 5 to 12% of 100%, only a small little snippet, is actual meat? Yeah. What's the rest of it? Filler. Filler? Filler. It's disgusting. Ooh. The filler, they have, uh, they have things like... No wonder it's a buck. <laughs> oh, sorry, the do sorry, dollar menu and more because yeah. the economy's so bad. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they even put things like food glue in it. They put this uh, monosodium gluconate. Monosodium gluconate, MSG? Yeah, they put... Uh, no, mono, no, that's the MSG. I'm thinking of the other one. I can't... It's called food glue. You know what? I'll look it up right here really quick, and I'll grab... Uh, I'll grab the real name of it for everyone here. But that food glue, that's just like a that's just like a waste product that they put in food. It's uh, literally what they glue. A fluffer? It's what they, they'll take little pieces of like, uh, say steak, right? You got little pieces of red meat, and they'll actually chunk it together with this meat glue. Oh, here it goes. Transglutam... Ah, dude, I don't even know I'm how to read say that. this. Here you I go. know a little bit you're of good, Latin. You're good with the pronunciation. Transglutaminase. Transglutaminase? Transglutaminase, a.k.a. meat glue. Ew. So pretty much what they do is they'll have like a bunch of chunks of like, you know, say a filet mignon. Mm -hmm. And what they'll do is they'll powder this meat glue all over it and they'll stuff the chunks together, all like put together and compacted. And they'll wrap like some wrap around it and put it in the fridge. So it's like plyboard. And then, yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's like plyboard. It's like plyboard food. And then what you end up doing is you take it out of the refrigerator after about a day and it'll actually look like a real piece of meat. 
You won't even see the glue marks or anything in it. It just looks like a marbling effect that it actually has, and that's the meat then. Meat glue. I can't believe that it's come to the point so far. I thought we were like an advanced society with, you know, <laughs> good quality food, water, and living, but majority of the population's going down the street to McDonald's every Getting day. Getting 5 to 12 percent burger. Yeah. Or real meat, meat. With meat glue. With meat glue. Pl plyboard burger. Or, uh, you know, the big story a long time ago was the pink slime. Yeah, I remember Everyone that. remember the pink slime? I mean, that was gross. I mean, did McDonald's make like, their chicken nuggets out of it? Yeah, I think they and, still use and the pink what slime. They, what they call it, it actually, what the term they used, mechanically separated chicken. Yeah. Meaning they just threw some chicken parts or whatever, if it maybe have come from a chicken, threw it into a giant if thing. Maybe have come, come from, from a, a chicken. chicken. <laughs> Mechanically separated it. I don't even know what that means. And then put it in a little patty or a little nugget. And then just uh, then serve it to you. Yeah. You ever notice like the McDonald's McNuggets? They always look like a little boot or like a little circle. Yeah, they all look like perfectly uniform shaped. Yeah. Like they're just coming out of a press. I didn't know chicken and you know mechanically separated chicken always came in perfect little shapes. You know maybe maybe it's for the kids out there. Goes like to a, show you people. It's like an alphabet soup, but your chicken McNuggets. When are they gonna do that? Make like A B C D and <laughs> little chicken McNuggets. Honestly, I don't know why they haven't. Yeah, McDonald's is on the There you go, McDonald's. Take uh, the alphabet McNuggets. You know how to so teach the children. So can, yeah, and I can so I can spell death. Yeah, death <laughs> by death by McDonald's. And meat glue. Yeah. <laughs> But um, it's, it's gross what they're doing to the food these days. I mean, I think we all can admit that today in modern society that the food that we're eating is not as good as, say, my and your parents were 24, yeah, our parents were in their Just 50s. a generation ago. Yeah, just a generation ago, they were eating a lot more high-quality food. Mm -hmm. uh, now, between people like me and you, we're, we're millennials, we're in our 20s right now, we've grown up on this food. Yeah. You know, from the get-go back in 1991 when I was born, I mean, McDonald's was very thriving at the time. Right. Fast food was huge. TV was huge. I mean, it was the 90s. I mean, fast food markets were just enormous during that time. And people didn't even have the mindset that they, that they do nowadays to even think about, you know, watching what they're eating and, like, yeah. checking out the food because, you know, it just wasn't around. People were just engaged at in least the it was At least it was around. smaller back it then. Did, it it was probably like, was around. It was just probably just smaller. Just pockets, you know, not in the mainstream. Yeah. Now it's definitely becoming I mean, a lot more enough. mainstream about the food. It's so bad that McDonald's is even changing what they're doing, I was right? going to say that uh, just recently uh, McDonald's was changing uh, their menu. or They're going back to, they're doing the loving thing, of course. Yeah. You know, friendships and hugs for meals. Everybody remembers that PR campaign. Yeah. Oh, yeah, just call your mom, wish her you love her. And the reason and they, were, uh, they were doing that is because they were, you know, getting um, bad reviews, they were, uh, their business was declining, Yes. and they were trying, they were struggling. It's like, oh, McDonald's wasn't maybe the best food to go with anymore. And honestly, out there, I want to give a round of applause because that's a victory for us out yeah, there. Yeah, that is. If we can make, force McDonald's to make extreme changes to what they're doing, that's a victory. That's called voting with, with your dollars. dollars. And that's what we always want to talk about here on Information. Voting with your dollars. That's the best way, too. Because, you know, those ballots don't matter anymore. They're all going to be put to machines anyways, and they're going to be corrupt, just like the other parts of the government are. But guess what? We could still vote with our dollars. We could still, you know, vote where we're going to go eat at. Mm -hmm. We could still go to, you know, like Whole Foods. Like, just yesterday, I stopped at uh, Fruitful Yield and Trader Joe's. And actually, I'll tell everyone out there that anyone goes to, like, Whole Foods or Fruitful Yield or Trader Joe's for their food... Go to Trader Joe's for actually lower prices for organic quality. Yeah, I've been to all three. You know, Fruitful Yield, you know, a little smaller, a little more local. Yeah. Small town type things. But the Trader Joe's to the, to the Whole Foods. Whole Foods is the big name out it's there. It's the conglomerate. Yeah, the exactly. It's like the Walmart of the, of the whole group. And then, you know, Trader Joe's would be considered, you know, the target. Which is like, you know, step below, same thing. A little yeah. bit better. Yeah. But... I don't know how to compare those twos, but whatever. I, I would say, actually, um, I was doing some research on Whole Foods, and actually some of their products, um, they were talking about, mm, excuse me, they were talking about they had a, a bag of, I think it was like blueberries, or I think it was a bag of blueberries, and it said like where it's from, but Whole Foods sometimes high, it's like Organic 365 is their mm -hmm. label, their label company, just like Costco's Kirkland. Um, but what it actually was is it said on the bottom of it, made in China or from China. 
See, but the thing was, is these third-party organic certified um, testers that go out and test these foods and see if they're organic or not went over to China and tested it, but they're not under the strictest regulations either. So actually, some of the foods that Whole wow. Foods is bringing in, they might not even know they go off the organic that they're organic. Of China, yeah, not the United States. Mm -hmm. and, oh, and and so it's kind of run through those companies then, and it's brought back here. And well, oh, it's organic over there, it's organic over here. But there's stipulations over there are a lot different than we have in the states. That's a good thing to know. I didn't know that. So actually, when I uh, when I went over there, I, I was reading because I was buying blueberries and stuff in the bags and everything, frozen ones. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of flipping, always flip over the bag and see what country it's from. Yeah. You know, you're gonna have to find the small print. It's almost like um, if like you flip a product over and it's like a plastic bag. You know, like there's always that little overlap. Yeah. There's the overlap of the where, bag. Where all like the hidden. Yeah. Hidden info so you is. gotta pull back the little overlap and like <laughs> look, and then you go find where it's from, and you go find that. Oh, this causes <laughs> death within two. No, I'm just kidding about that part. <laughs> but no, you do find where it says like made in China, everything under that little lap or that flap or whatever. And that's uh, that's quite interesting. So anytime you're at like Whole Foods or anything, just make sure you know where you're getting your products from. Everyone kind of wants to know where they're getting their food. If it's locally grown, it's probably the best because then it helps support the community as well too. Even me and David were talking the other day about possibly getting a piece of land to start farming on. I mean, I think it'd be a great business going out there, going to farmers markets, pushing the yes. organicness, and not to mention at the same time we could push organic, but we could also inform people. We could even have people listen, giving out them the business cards for information. We'd be like, oh, here you go. Uh, we're, you know, we're running a food market now, and here we are. We're pushing this as well, too. Mm -hmm. That's kind of interesting. Um, and actually, if anybody wants a, a good read, before I forget about this, um, she was on uh, one of the shows on the 24.7 The Stream earlier. Her name was uh, Dr. Teresa Nesbitt, or she goes by Dr. Teresa. Or She's one of my mentors. I like to refer to her as Mother Teresa because she's yes. the most nicest lady in the world. I've known her for many years. And she's a wicked genius, too, especially with food, the agriculture business, the brain, your genes, you know, epigenetics she's looking at. She, everything that you can imagine on the body with what you're eating, you are what you eat. She is one, one smart lady. She's, you know, top of the field with this. And her name is Dr. Teresa Nesbitt, and she's got a book on Amazon if anyone wants to go out there called Evolutionary Eating, How We Got Fat and Simple, Seven Simple Fixes. Actually, I had her, um, I had her in the store about a, about a month or two ago, and she did a little uh, seminar on about eating and everything and mm -hmm. how to eat if you're pregnant and how to eat uh, you know, throughout the day and what to eat, what to stay away from. And the main thing is that we want to hit with this topic here today is eat real food. Because yes. that's what it's about. I mean, because you are what you eat <coughs> and you need living food for a living body. Yeah. You don't need to put dead, processed food into a body that <clears throat> needs something living to suck off those cells. Those cells need living material. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, like, uh, we go out and we go hunting, right? And we're out there and we're hunting and we kill an animal. And that meat, you know, he's dead now. The animal's dead or he or she, whatever it was. Usually it's the male that we go after because mm -hmm. uh, regulations can't go to female because they have to reproduce. Um, but we, we take the male and he's dead. But the flesh is still very alive. I mean, the flesh still twitches. There's still a little bit of blood flow going on between the nerves yes. and everything like that. The body's still much alive. Now, when you take that same body and you let it sit there for a week, what ends up happening? You know, Start, parasites come to it. Starts bloating. Starts break, bloating, breaking degrading. Down. That's not alive flesh anymore. That's very no. dead flesh. So what we want to do is we want to get things as closest to living as possible. Yeah. Like David was saying, we're living human beings. We need living food. Not to mention like some of the things that we probably neglect in our diet are fruits, veggies, leafy greens, and things of that, antioxidants, things of that nature. All those are the trace minerals. Yeah, I mean those are those are the living things. The plants, they're living. Yeah. And we need to bring in living foods to fuel a living body. But everybody knows that nowadays you go to the store and you see, you know, all the fruits and vegetables and, and the meats and the dairy. How long has that been out? You know, you think about this meat, like it came from what, the slaughterhouse, yeah. when? When was that animal killed? When was, it, when was it slaughtered? When was it butchered? How long did it take for the shipping to get to your local store, wherever you yeah. are? And how long has it been sitting in the back? How long has it been sitting in the How many preservatives are in there? I know. Because uh, they have these gases and everything that actually what you end up having happen is they'll take the food, like say they're taking it from, I think United States likes to get our oranges from like Australia 
or something. We don't like our oranges. They're not orange yeah, enough all, for us. All, yeah, you know what? Actually, funny. Speaking of oranges, kind of side topic. When uh, me, me and Juan were in Florida, mm -hmm. we were we were in Florida. We were talking. We we're sitting in the hot tub. We we're talking. You know, some other some Floridians down there. We we're talking about Tropicana oranges. Yeah, yeah. Got brought up those Florida oranges. She said that, or that all the Florida oranges don't even people don't even Florida don't even get those. They're all shipped out overseas yeah. because everybody wants Florida oranges. You know, talking about that with. Um, Wait, wait, where were we going before? <laughs> <laughs> I know this is a huge topic for us and everything. We're talking about GMOs. We were, we're talking, talking about, about the, the processed meat. The, and the oh, meat, yeah. yeah. So we like to get our stuff from Australia and everything. So what they'll end up doing is they'll pick them before they're fully ripe. And they'll put them in these huge trailers or these huge containers. And they'll pump these containers with gas to keep them almost in an unripe state until they actually get to where they're going. And then they'll pump it with a different gas that will actually speed up the ripening process. And actually, wow. then you actually have ripe fruit in your in your storefront. So that's I've, been waiting there for two weeks, I've but... I've always been thinking, how in the world <clears throat> do they still have green bananas? How do those bananas stay green from whenever they're cut mm -hmm. the country away and shipped all the way up here and from, still green? It's from these gases that they kind of, that they put. They put these gases in there, and then it kind of just helps keep them unripe, and then they put another gas that ripens them. I mean, it's these biochemical companies like Monsanto that have uh, formulated these chemicals oh, yeah. that are doing this. Monsanto. But what I wanted to say before I got off on another little tangent here um, <laughs> is that I wanted to talk about, talk about how you know, Florida ships everything overseas, but what's going on in California right now is they're actually having like a... Uh, what they call pretty much like a buildup of cargo ships sitting outside in the bay mm -hmm. that can't get in because now they got like these, uh, I'll call them like double decker cargo ships. These like double loaded cargo ships. Are you talking about like those freighters that just have all like those shipping containers yeah. on them? There, there's they these bigger from. ones now. There's bigger ones now, I guess, that are taking like double to triple the length to unload them. And what's end up happening is some of these other ships are now waiting to get into the harbor to unload. So what's end up happening now is a lot of these California farmers usually ship out a lot of those stuff through those harbors. Mm -hmm. And now it's getting backlogged because all these ships are waiting. They can't get their food on these ships. So now actually some storefronts are actually um, not having as much food. They're rationalizing out the food in California right now. Oh, wow. Right? They're rationalizing, they, rationalizing the water. You mean rationing? Rationing. Rationalizing. <laughs> rationing the water. <laughs> rationing the food. But, you know, they were talking about, they're like, well, why don't the farmers just send it to the market closest to them? They're losing money not sending it. It's because these companies don't want this. Yeah. Because all the food that's grown in America needs to be shipped overseas. Because mm -hmm. it's a global s system now. It's not that you make the, the, the food for you and your community and your country. It's how we make the food and then we ship it all over the world. Yeah, I mean, how many, I, I can't imagine how many products that we actually get from the United States are actually our food. I've actually wondered that. Like, how much, how much of the food that we actually eat in our country is grown and raised in the United States? Anything from meat, fruits, vegetables, anything like a fish. A small amount. I mean, especially if you want a lot of tropical plants, exotic pineapples mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I mean, Hawaii and all, but... Yeah, but uh, right after this, we'll get more into uh, what's going on with our food, what we're eating, how we, you know, what we turn into when we eat these sort of things, and how we feel. But right after this, we we'll right back. But stay tuned. And we're back with Inform Nation, talking about the food industry and what we're eating and what we're becoming from the food that we're eating. And uh, I wanted to, uh, you know, we're talking a little bit about uh, shipping food overseas. And Americans don't really eat too much of their own natural home-raised food. Um, but actually, I wanted to bring this up, and I was watching this documentary uh, last week or the week before. And actually, Mexico was growing like a bunch of tomatoes. They had like a big farm down there. They're growing, you know, loads and tons and tons and tons of tomatoes. And what ended up happening was that there's like these bidding wars between food companies and food growers to get these companies like tomatoes. Like say, what's what like Dole? Or what are, the, what are some of those like tomato companies like Dole, uh, like, like, uh, like Dole tomatoes or something like that? D O L E. Dole, I, mean, I don't know really. I don't really know. But Dole does like pineapples and stuff like that. Like do they do other things like that? I, I guess. Hey, if you know out there those big food companies, call yeah, us if in, you know any of the tomato, hit us up in chat. But um, what ended up happening? Say they these farmers shipping you know their product to these big corporations and these far in these uh, supermarkets like Safeway that owns Jewel Osco, and they're shipping them to Safeway. Well, Safeway has like a bidding thing. 
They want the cheapest food because they want to make the most money from it. So what ends up happening is that, say, these, this little uh, village down in Mexico, or actually there's another one down in Florida, and it's like a farming community that's very poor, and it's underkept, and it's all these Mexicans working over there for pretty much slave labor. But anyways, they, they bid on this food, and what ends, up ha what ends up happening is if that certain farm doesn't get the right bid in, they just worked all season to throw away their food because it would be more expensive and they would lose money boxing the food and shipping it out to you know either markets or anything that actually would be just to throw it away. That's pretty effed up. So they're throwing away tons and tons of food when they could just give it away. But look how many, everyone's talking about like oh feeding the hungry and we need more food. Why aren't these big companies donating it to like local shelters mm -hmm. or, or, or even big like charity corporations here in America where the food can be shipped or just around the country. That's what should be going and people can be fed and then when, once they're fed and their basic needs are made, at least with food, they can get, be able to get back up on their feet again. So why aren't we helping local communities with that? Why are they just throwing away this food? I don't know why they're throwing away because we could definitely feed a lot of people with that food. Oh yeah, and these companies, if you're donating all that money, aren't these companies getting giant tax deductions? Tax maybe it's not big enough for what they're putting out though. I mean, I thought about that, maybe, maybe they matter. would still like, lose money. But still, the, it's for the integrity of it. Where's the morals at? Yeah, where's you know? the morals? Just give the food away to some homeless people or something. Yeah. Not to mention, like, um, I was reading some uh, statistics and I was actually, I should have brought them with me here today. I didn't bring these statistics because it just kind of popped in my mind right now. But it was actually the food production saying, oh, well, we're helping fight the food hunger problem. And, you know, a lot of people are still going hungry. And they say, oh, well, the population's rising. That's why we need all these GMOs and everything like that. But they actually say that organic food is actually more sustainable in our economy, in our society, than actually the GMOs are. Because we're killing the soil with the GMOs. Not to mention there's way more food being produced right now than there actually are people now. So actually the food production market has risen way past actually how much we need to consume. Not to mention, yeah. I mean, not to mention on uh, statistics.com, was it statistics.com? What's that website that I always use, statistics.com? I think, yeah, it has like it's statistics about everything yeah, it's, it's, you ever needed to know a statistic about. Yeah, it's statistics, um, let's see here, statistics. Eh, it's not statistics.com, I can't think of what it is. Uh, but I was looking it up here, and um, what ended up it is, is the average American right now is eating 3,800 calories a day. It just makes me kind of sick thinking about that. I mean, how much is the, you know, what a male is supposed to eat? Well, they say around 2,000, right? 2,000. 2,000 calories a day is what a male is supposed to eat. And now we're eating 3,800 calories in a day. Almost double. And the funny thing is, is that we're nutrient deficient. It's because we're not eating the proper food. Yeah. We're eating high calorie, high fat. High, high processed. I wouldn't say high fat. Yeah, don't worry about that. High, high trans fats. High trans fats and all the bad fats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It is 420. <laughs> but, um, no, uh, but, yeah, these statistics and everything are pretty much saying that we're eating way more food than we're supposed to eat. We're nutrient deficient. Yeah, we're not getting the micronutrients, the trace minerals and elements that we really need for our body. Mm -hmm. We're just getting like the whole, the bulk, the potatoes, the meat, the, the trans fat. Well, actually, the well, the, well, the potatoes we need, but we, potatoes are fine. Like sweet potatoes or rustic potatoes are perfectly I'm fine. in the quantities that people are eating. Oh, yeah, but we're, but we're eating them in french fries. Yeah, we're exactly. Deep, we're deep frying them. Who even knows if those are french fries? And like, potatoes and those french fries. It's like vegetable a, oil. I mean, yeah. vegetable oil is so bad for you. So if anyone out there, huge fact, look it up on the internet. Don't take my word for it because you can never take my word for anything because you have to research it yourself and see if it fits right with you. But look up vegetable oil and see if it's good or bad for you. I know it's bad for you, but do you? That's the question. Vegetable oil is horrible. Don't cook with it. Don't put it in your yeah. food. Don't, you don't, don't do anything with vegetable oil. That's the, that's the first thing. Vegetables aren't supposed to have oils coming from them. Yeah. They press these vegetables and these seeds of these vegetables so much in this high chemically processed, like, uh, what are the, what are it's pretty like much a like hydraulic a, press. Yeah, hydraulic press to press out any sort of extraction of oil, and it's really bad. It's really bad, and they have to put it under these high temperatures Ugh. to actually get it out, and it's disgusting. Me, personally, I like 
Like a little olive oil. Olive oils are good. And like, I would if I would have anything fried, I would have I'd rather have it fried in like a peanut oil. That's just me yeah, personally. Yeah, peanut oils are fine. Peanut oils I think are fine. I think it's delicious. Yeah, peanut oils are good. Or like they got canola oil. No, canola oil is bad. Yeah, that's yeah. Canola oil is bad. bad. Um, How do they even make canola oil? I don't know. Do you know what canola is? <laughs> We're gonna look it up. What right? is canola? But uh, no. If you guys know what canola canola is? Giraffe, what is it? It's like corn oil. Corn oil. Okay. Yeah. So corn. I'm, Okay, so I mean, uh, corn oil, I mean, corn is one of the biggest genetically modified things out there. I mean, we feed our cattle with it. We feed our, we feed ourselves with it. We're feeding, you know, chickens. We feed, we feed the world we with it. We feed the world with corn. I mean, and then you get the byproduct of ethanol, so ethanol with the cars and everything uh, like that. But corn is really bad for us, especially the genetically modified version of it is definitely not good. Actually, there's a... A little article on Natural News talking about, um, here we go, I'm looking up, I got it on my phone right here. Shock it, here we go, article says, 919 of 2012 on Natural News. Great website if you want to know anything about Natural News. It's got the health ranger on there, Mike Adams, he's the health ranger. Very smart guy. And this is what the, uh, the article's topic is. Shock findings in new GMO study. Rats fed a lifetime of GMO corn grow horrifying tumors. Yes. Seventy percent of females die early. That is a big thing everybody needs to look up. They did a study on rats. When was the study done? Uh, I mean, two thousand and twelve. Yeah, the article's from two thousand twelve. Yeah, two thousand twelve. So the, they did a study and they fed a, a whole a bunch of like lab rats, where they do a lot of studies on, because it it it's closer to what humans would experience in the rats. Just the entire the, the genetics of the rats and everything. It's close to humans. I don't know why, but it is. Mm -hmm. And they did the study on the rats, so they fed the rats a lifetime throughout their entire lives, GMO corn and tap water. And through three generations, after almost three generations of rats later, they came up with the, the, the rats started growing massive tumors. If you look this online, you can see the rats. Look at the pictures of these things. They're growing massive tumors. They're, uh, they're definitely dying. At, early the women the female rats this is big everyone the female rats started growing breast tumors early on after almost three generations now look at society today we're almost multi multiple generations I don't know how many for real but we're multiple generations into genetically modified food and tap water here, if you go to uh, facebook.com slash information live, you could see the article just posted about it. Perfect. And we're already three generations in. Look at society. Look at women. Breast cancer is through the roof. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I had a personal experience my neighbor having breast cancer. Yes, I know. Rest in peace, Summer. Rest in peace, Summer. And, uh, she, yeah, exactly. She, uh, the, the rats... They're starting to I'm losing my train of thought because I'm thinking about summer now. Yeah, Thanks, yeah. Alex. I'm sorry about that. It's I'm all right. Sorry about that. It's all right. So, yeah, look what's going on. The, the rats are getting cancer. And I mean, look, the cancer rates are exploding. These, these tumors are huge. And, and the thing that we're not, you know, I've had a couple family members get cancer. And, and they, everyone knows I'm huge on the organics, the GMOs, and eating right for your body. You know, I'm not perfect all the time, but I eat a pretty healthy round diet with greens, vegetables, and everything, especially in the last year or so. I've moved a lot farther. My, I feel a lot better in my body and everything. That's a big too. thing. If you can't, if you, if you can't, if you, even if you try, just try, just do a little bit of something. To, to that's what it's, that's what it's about. And that's, and that's what I did, you know. And as you know, I mean, some people just don't make transformations overnight. And moving to a healthier diet, like even myself, like, you know, I used to eat, oh, well, a couple days this week I ate something healthy, and then the other days I ate crap. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, a couple more days I ate healthier things, or 80 to 90% of my day was healthy, and then late night I had a little snack or something like that. And then the more and more time goes by, I, I notice myself, I'm, I'm going to the grocery store more often, picking myself up healthy products, healthy snacks. Like yesterday, we went to Trader Joe's. I picked myself up my own trail mix, organic nuts and cranberry. Delicious. It was delicious. And, um, you know, things like that. But it, it's just about those small steps that you start making. I mean, even if it's just like, hey, this week I went and got an organic, you know, a case of organic chicken. That's all it's about in the beginning. Just make those little strides and then, you know, maybe get honey instead of sugar. And royal pollen or royal jelly honey with the pollen in it still 
a little bit healthier and just start making those subtle moves and, and go with real salts with like minerals and everything. And yes. There's actually a company called Real Salt. You go online, realsalt.com, great salt. Have it at home. Uh, Celtic sea salt's really good too. Himalayan pink salt is also good. You just got to watch out for those because they blow up some of those mines with TNT. And then the TNT debris sits on top of the salt. So you got to watch out for those as well too. Though, definitely big ionized salt. Yeah, and they they took the i the iodine, iodine out of the salt, and that's what's leading the leading the thyroid problems. Yeah, now. and goiter. Yeah, you see everybody with these big double <coughs> double chins and everything. Oh no, they're just fat. No, they have thyroid problems. Their thyroid is inflamed. It's because of the iodine. And everyone and everyone's getting fat, and they're wondering why. Yeah. Like, oh, I don't eat that much. Well, what are you eating? What aren't you getting enough of? Is your thyroid in balance with the rest of your body? Are your you know, are your glands working in synchronicity with everything it's else? It's not about quantity. It's about quality. Yeah. If you're eating a thousand pounds of freaking the most quality food around, yeah, you know, you're not going to be, you know, the healthiest because you're eating a thousand pounds. But still, that amount of food, you're not going to be having the, the effects from it. But if you're eating a thousand pounds of just garbage processed foods that the majority of people are eating today, you're going to see all the health effects and health oh, yeah. problems down the line. I mean, um... Even uh, I think Teresa and Troy Casey, who I had an interview on my YouTube channel with, uh, we were talking about if you just went on a diet, don't worry about cutting your calories. Don't don't worry at all about cutting calories. But take the foods that you're eating, take out the bad foods, and increase the actual real foods. Like if you just ate steaks, potatoes, greens, avocados, fruits, berries, nuts, anything like that. If you're obese. If you just ate real food, you'll start dropping weight right off the get-go. Yeah. You'll just start dropping weight. Even if your calories didn't drop, your body weight will just start dramatically, dramatically just dropping because actually you're not getting the chemicals that are, you know, making chemical processes in your body like leptin getting produced in your body. And leptin's this uh, hormone in your body that triggers hunger, I believe. I'd have to look more into that. Um, but actually all these things are making you hungry, like MSG. That just makes you more Mono, What is that, monosodium glutamate? Monosodium glutamate, yeah. Monosodium glutamate. And uh, what that does, that makes you hungrier. It triggers the, uh, what is it, the dopamine response in your head. I think it's a dopamine response. I'm not sure. But it triggers a chemical response in, in your, your body. That yeah. triggers pleasure. Mm -hmm. And so you're, you're getting you pleasure like you're from the food. more and more. That's why you can eat an entire bag of chips. Mm -hmm. That's a huge bag of chips because you're just constantly eating them, eating them. It's yep. the MSG. That's why, uh, like McDonald's, for instance, and their french fries, you never can seem to just take one and put it in your mouth and eat it. You're always grabbing for more and more and more. And you're it's always addictive. grabbing like three or four or five at a yeah. time. Yeah, and just shoveling them in. So we need more superfoods. That's a big thing we're going to get into, superfoods. Yeah, superfoods are definitely huge. And, uh, I mean, a couple superfoods we go with already. Uh, superfoods out there, there's things like uh, chlorella, spirulina. I, had a, I was on um, spirulina. another show where we were talking about chlorella, spirulina. Those are algaes and everything that are from the ocean, very high in proteins, high in amino acids I've as had, well. I've had some before mixed in with a smoothie. I thought it was delicious. Yeah, it is delicious. It makes you feel great, too. It really has no taste. No. If, if you put it in with, like, a drink or, like, a nice smoothie or anything like that, mm -hmm. you're not going to taste it. It's delicious. No. And it's and, so uh, healthy for you. You could also go with, um, you know, like, a lot of berries and everything, like blueberries, raspberries, a lot of antioxidants in those. Those are going to help kind of clean up your body throughout the day. Um, you know, if you want to go with some good superfood fats, like coconut oil is great. Coconut oil is getting, I mean, we could almost have a whole show. On coconut oil. On coconut oil. I mean, I use coconut oil myself in everything. I use coconut butter, coconut oil, coconut manna, uh, coconut shavings, like little chips of coconut. Those are delicious, too. Uh, but, you know, once you start eating a little bit more coconut, it's like, wow, I, I really love the taste of coconut. And everybody, and that whole thing is coming around right now. Everyone's oh, yeah. on the coconut water mm -hmm. and the coconut milk. It's coming into like everything, especially me working at Pepsi. They're coming out with drinks with more and more coconut water in it. Yep. I'm like though, you know, Pepsi, everybody watch out. Watch out for their coconut. Watch out for their coconut, but you know, it's coming into the mainstream. But that's good. I mean, that's making these companies make a better strive for a healthier planet then. Yes. I mean, now... The question is, are they going to kind of put it over the veil of it's healthy of for you? Of course they it's are. Like, it's like Stevia. It's like a lot of like Pepsi and Coca-Cola and a lot of these other companies came out with Stevia, mm -hmm. but their Stevia isn't really Real, natural right. Stevia. It's, like, it's chemically processed and treated and alterated Stevia. It's their own little brand of Stevia. <coughs> it's a patented version of their Stevia, which makes it different. So it's pretty much might as well just be Splenda, artificial sweeteners like sucralose or aspartame. I think that... Splenda and that stevia stuff 
is is gross. I think it's way way too sweet. Oh my sweet. god! It's disgusting. I actually I was at Starbucks one time and I'm getting a coffee and they didn't have any of the sugar in the raw. Right, mm-hmm. that's what I use. Only, only that sugar. And they only had like the some. I think it was stevia. It was stevia. And I opened up the packet. You know, poured a little in there, about a half a pack. I didn't know. As soon as I went to drink that coffee, it was so sweet. It was gross. I'm, I had to throw it out. It's very bitter, too. Yeah. So stevia is a little bit bitter. You got to get like a good whole leaf stevia. If you ever go with stevia, uh, you want it to stay on the back of it, whole leaf extract, and it's usually going to be in a liquid at that point. And then when you start reading that little bottom label that says other ingredients, you don't want other ingredients. You just want whole leaf extract or whole leaf stevia, whole leaf oh, it's coming straight from the leaf. You don't want any processing in it. You don't want any ethyl alcohol. You don't want any... Um, you know, you don't want any dextrose, any maltodextrin. Any of those things are just pretty much simple forms of carbohydrates that spike your insulin. Definitely. And we don't want the insulin spike because what's another huge thing that's hitting people these days is diabetes. Diabetes. Everyone's getting diabetes today. Why? Because we're constantly drinking sugar drinks all day long. I mean, everything we drink is sugar, 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 sugar. Even like... Oh, even the diet drinks, it's the aspartame. Yeah, it's and that's actually and that actually what ends up happening, you know, for the people out there who drink Diet Coke, um, actually the aspartame and everything in there, and they put a couple other ingredients in, diet Coke in the there. Diet Coke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what ends up happening is actually it triggers your brain to actually want more Diet Coke, and it actually makes you hungrier throughout the day because it tricked your brain. It was like, no, wait, this was artificial. There was no really calories to this. You just try tricking me. No, I'm hungry again. Now you're drinking more Diet Coke, or now you're going for that bag of chips, those can of Pringles, that, you know, that Snickers bar, those boxes of Twinkies, Ho Ho's, and Ding Dongs. Oh yeah. Oh look, I just all I just typed in was in, into Google was uh, the only thing was, was dangers of aspartame. The first article that came up, aspartame. This is from Mercola.com. Aspartame. By far the most dangerous substance added to most foods today. It's a, neuro, it's a neurotransmitter yeah. uh, toxin, right? It's a neurotoxin on your brain, I believe, right? It is. Right it, there, yeah, neurotoxin. There we go. It's a neurotoxin, so it helps. Uh, it's, it doesn't help when it whoa, helps. <laughs> Strong word. Uh, but no, what it does is it starts blocking off the synapses and electricity between neurons in your brain that make you think clear, make you connect dots, make you function. Oh, look at this. Here's a few. Here, according to researchers and physicians studying the adverse Wait, where's this, effects... where's this from? This is from Mercola.com. Okay, Mercola. Dr. Mercola, great website as well, too. Actually, I have a guy that comes into my store talking about Dr. Uh, Mercola as well, too. Great website. Here, right here. It's about halfway down the page. Look at According to researchers and physicians studying the adverse effects of aspartame, the following chronic illnesses may can be triggered or worsened. Uh, on, add. A little pop-up. Gotta love it. Triggered can the following chronic illnesses can be triggered or worsened by ingesting aspartame. Oh my God, these are horrible. What is it for? Brain tumors, multiple sclerosis, Scler- sclerosis. sclerosis, multiple sclerosis, epilepsy, Alzheimer's, diabetes, lymphoma, fibromyalgia, Parkinson's disease, chronic fatigue syndrome, birth defects. I mean, how many people? Diabetes. There you go. Diabetes. Now, the, the thing is, chronic fatigue, I mean, I have so many people that come to store, oh, I have no energy during my day. I have no energy. I'm always tired. I'm always, oh. A lot of men with testosterone like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of women. And they're like, I'm like, what do you do? Oh, I drink Diet Cokes or I drink uh, Gatorades all day. Because, you know, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to cut calories. I'm drinking Diet Pop. You're drinking Diet Pop? Listen to what you said. You said. You're drinking, like... <laughs> Listen, oh my God. listen to what you just said. Okay, I'm not Come make, on, I'm Todd. I'm not making fun of you, Come Todd. on. Todd's over there drinking a Diet Coke. Get Todd Coke. in here drinking Diet Coke. Come on. <laughs> Look, this was all flat. I've had a half a can. I'm feeling that. Multiple, <laughs> <laughs> multiple sweets. You say multiple scrumptious? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love live radio. Yeah. Does it have uh, Does it have sucralose? It has, it has on the on the bottom. Pyphen hycholine. That doesn't say it has aspartame in there. Are you yeah, sure? Yes. Yes. It does. Oh wait. Oh wait. Wait. It's the third ingredient. Behind water. 
Ascorbic acid, okay. Two, and then uh, potassium, potassium, potassium. <laughs> potassium gluconate? Oh, yes. Okay. All right, yes. potassium gluconate, okay. So, yeah, the, <laughs> the third ingredient. <laughs> Another quick little point about aspartame. 10% of aspartame is actually methanol, which is wood alcohol. Wood alcohol. And that, which is poison. Actually, I did, um... Wood alcohol is a deadly poison. I did a right whole. There, I did sentence. a whole. I did a whole blog on actually. We can get a whole show on aspartame. I, yeah, we could do a whole. Just, you know, maybe we should get off aspartame right now. But everybody knows out there, artificial sweeteners are horrible for you. If it's not aspartame, it's sucralose though. Sucralose. Watch out for sucralose as well too. Watch out for. Oh, we got Todd now drinking ninety-one percent rubbing alcohol too. Oh, oh yeah, wood just, alcohol. Yeah, you just gotta, you gotta <laughs> wash it down with some good stuff, man. <laughs> Gotta wash it down with the good stuff. But everybody out there, look up aspartame, look up the dangers of Sugar it. Sugar lows, it's what's in Splenda, sweet and low, equal, etc. But those are some artificial artificial sweeteners that we should watch out for. And we were talking about superfoods, uh, doing like coconut oil, chlorella, spirulina. Uh, what else we want to talk about? Okay, here, you know what? Let's talk about um, let's talk about like effects on the brain of what you eat and like the rich class versus the poor class. Yes, of we'll tie, we can, you know what? That's perfect. We're gonna tie that back into they. Because, you know, the rich class, they're eating real food. They're eating the meats, the vegetables. Well, you know what? That's a perfect thing to come That's right back. That's definitely with. a perfect thing to come back. And, uh, you know, this is Informed Nation. We're getting really in-depth here with the foods, the food industry, the FDA, EPA. Everything is crazy out there with your food. So stay tuned and find out how to make your brain work better by eating better foods. Here we are back with Inform Nation. Hello. 49 minutes past the hour worldwide. Happy Monday. And we're here talking about, you know, feeding your brain to make you become smarter, richer, more successful, more clear, more happy, more vibrant, more radiate, more radiant, more just energetic in general. Oh yeah. Here we go. Um get, we're gonna talk get, a little bit about get back to normal. Yeah, let's get back to let's get back to actually being, having a being function, alive. Yeah, having a functional brain, a functional body, and actually eating for your brain. And actually what you wanna do when you eat for your brain is uh, you wanna eat, of course, like we we're saying before, real foods. And we're talking about they before eating, you know, rich diets. Yeah. And then you have poor diets. Well, throughout time, uh, if you look it up, the poor have always ate grain, and the rich have always ate vegetables, fruits, and meats. It's just how it is. I mean, even back in the Roman days when they started collapsing, they started hyping up the Colosseum to keep everyone distracted. Put bread in circuses. And putting bread in the circuses, giving out bread, you know, at the bread line, giving out free bread in order to, you know, pretty much just, it's pretty much what it did was implode the Roman Empire is what ended up happening uh, because they had a lot of financial problems and everything like the United States has now. Any empire usually kind of falls after a good amount of time anyways. But the rich people are eating these like rich diets with rich foods and nutrients and micronutrients and good macros and awesome anti antioxidants and enzymes and amino acids. And they're eating, you know, they're eating fat is what they're eating. They're eating fat. They're not eating the chemicals. They're not eating the chemicals. They're eating real fat. They're eating animal fat. They're eating avocados. They're eating olive oils, like real olive oils. They're eating coconut oil. You know, they're eating especially animal organs. Animal organs are huge because animal organs, like think about it. I was just with uh, mentor Teresa Nesbitt, who I had mentioned in her book earlier last week. We are talking about it. And if you go out and you eat like a, go get like a chicken liver or a liver, or a, a pig liver, any of these livers, livers, okay, you're going to think like, oh, livers, that can't be good for you because that's what, you know, takes all the toxins out of your body. They, all the toxins must get stored. In, no, toxins aren't getting stored in your liver unless they're normally stored there from... They're being filtered by the liver. They're being filtered by the liver. So what that means is your filter needs a lot of um, antioxidants, nutrients, minerals, and everything to break down those toxins and actually put your body back into a balanced state and it's not being toxified. So eating liver actually will increase your vitality enormously. I guess it's the one thing that you're supposed to see. I yet have to go, I have to go buy liver. I've That's, never had liver? I've never had like a legit organ meat liver. I've had some organ meat before, but never liver. I've had brains. I've had like liver worst, but it's totally different than liver. So you actually want to get like an organ liver 
and like batter it with butters and salts and make it all tasty because that's the way that your brain's going to get used to eating liver. That's what Teresa always says to me, like, you know, people who don't like eating vegetables and everything, smother them in butter, throw some lard on them, throw some animal Ooh. fat. And I know everyone's like, wait, wait, lard, butter, animal fat? What do you want to give me, a heart attack? This is no. just in the prelim stages to get you used to, to get you used to it liking these type of foods. Yeah, but even the butter, the lard, and the fat aren't bad for you, though. Those are actually good especially, for you. Especially the fats. Yeah. And what, and what the fat does with, the, with those nutrients is it helps absorb everything. Fats, uh, I have a video called Put fat, uh, Fats with Your Vegetables. Reason being is because fats are the catalyst, pretty much the um, little transporter for these micronutrients to get into your body. It's what helps them absorb into your body. Mm -hmm. So if, like, I tell everyone who takes, like, a multivitamin or anything, if you're going to take your multivitamin on an empty stomach, you might as well not have took it at all because it's just going to flush right through your body. Hardly any of it's going to get absorbed and you're just going to poop it right out. Take it with a nice meal. Take it with a nice meal. Take it with a hunk of, you know, peanut butter. Take it with a hunk of coconut oil. Any sort of fat, take it with it. You're going to have a lot more absorption from that multivitamin into your body than you did without it because the fats are helping absorb into the body. Because it's not just water soluble. It's, it's fat lipid soluble. Yeah. And uh, so what you want to do then for, you know, pretty much eating for your brain is you want to eat a lot of good fats like the EPA and the DHA found in uh, fish. Fish is the, one of the biggest things that EPA and DHA are found in. EPA and DHA are the two fats that make up fish oil. If I don't know out there takes fish oil, um, EPA and DHA is what makes up the omega-3s in the fish oil. So if you're taking fish oil out there, I would suggest uh, from my own personal experience, my own knowledge, uh, you're going to want to take anywhere from 1,000 milligrams, which is 1 gram, all the way up to 3,000 milligrams, which is 3 grams, um, if you're not eating fish three to four times a week. And actually, fish is a very lean meat, which ha helps your brain because it has EPA and DHA in it, the omega-3s. Yep. Um, also, what's really good for your brain are a lot of nuts, tree nuts and everything like that. they got a lot of good fats in them. Helps sustain your energy, helps sustain your mind, helps feed your mind. Uh, then you can move into things like berries and antioxidants. Those help with your brain. Eating a good fruit, those help with your brain. So getting back to the basics of nutrition, you know, are really helping you with your brain and your body. I mean, um, Paul Check, great guy to research. If you look up anybody in the nutritional field, he's kind of a leading innovator in the whole functional muscle, functional body, functional mind, spiritual realm. Talks about some great stuff. And uh, Paul Check talks about, you know, feeding your body, you know, when you're lifting, like say you're lifting weights, well, you're going to need a lot more protein in your diet because you're going to need to build a lot more muscle. But if you're not lifting weights and, you know, you're kind of living the more spiritual lifestyle, um, you're going to want to eat a lot more leafy greens because, as Paul Check says, when you eat heavy fats, heavy meats and everything, it actually clouds your spiritual brain. So actually, if you eat light foods, it kind of feeds your light body, and that actually helps feed you spiritually. So a lot of greens, a lot of leafy greens, vegetables, leaner meats. And that ties into like having a summer diet and a winter diet. Yeah. For the different types of foods you can eat, how your body's being active throughout the seasons. Oh yeah, you uh, you know a little, you know a little bit more about, about the summer foods and winter foods than me. Break it down a little bit. Yeah, you. Uh, I was watching an interview with Elliot Holes. I'm a big fan of Elliot Holes. Ty Lopez also as well. They did a great interview on it. Paul Check talks about it a lot too. Um, but your body, your body is. It depends on what, I guess what atmosphere you kind of live in, but then it doesn't at the same time. Is the difference between winter and summer foods? The difference is during the winter we're in hibernation mode. So in the winter times you want to eat a lot of fat. We want to eat a lot of uh, warm foods, a lot of cooked foods, a lot of high fat, high fat meat foods, a lot of red meats and things like that during the winter, a lot of stews, mm -hmm. a lot of really dense, dense foods. foods. And we want to eat that during the winter because we need to store all that. We need to keep our bodies warm. We need warm foods. We need a lot of fat to keep our bodies warm during the winter. And that also came down <coughs> to that we, they were eating more thicker, denser foods. It's because food you know, during the winter wasn't as prevalent. Now, now coming into modern times, it is. So back, the, back then, eating that thicker, denser food made you fuller longer. Oh, yeah. So you didn't have to eat as, as much because there wasn't much food around. Yep, exactly. So those foods will fill you up a lot more. And so you could go more throughout your day without eating and still be energized. And then 
when it starts coming around the spring and summertime, you're going to want to change your diet to more lighter foods, a lot more fruits, a lot more vegetables, things that grow in the spring and summertime. You're going to want to go with leaner meats. You're going to want to go like fish, chicken, turkey. You want to do a lot more raw vegetables during that time, raw fruits. Because that fruit's just fresh off the vine, fresh from the plant. Yeah, because, I mean, a lot of those fruits and everything, if you think about fruits, like, the, a lot of them grow in warm climate. Mm -hmm. And if you think about, you know, eating for your climate, like, that's why I want to, like, start eating, like, we live in Chicagoland here. I want to go find foods that are naturally supposed to grow in Chicagoland because they know the elements. Portillo's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go to Port. <laughs> Oh, man, come on. That's man. natural, right? Giordano's. Yeah, yeah, Chicagoland, Portillo's, and Giordano's pizza. Oh, man, Lou Malnati's. That was so Oh, great. man. Okay, let's, don't everyone listen to that, okay? It's great food, don't get me wrong, and you need to treat yourself sometimes. So some good Portillo's. If you've never had Portillo's, you can get it shipped to you, I think, these yes, days. Yes, please it's do. It's like the best Chicagoland food ever. But, you know, what you're going to want to do is those those fruits and everything have sustained themselves in the environment that they're living in. And those foods are going to help you sustain yourself in the environment that you're living in. So you're eating fruits and everything that are high in juices, high in water, and everything that keep you hydrated, they keep you feeling, f ah, feel it, feeling full of life. A little tongue twied. Yeah, twang twied, way. <laughs> but they're going to keep you, you know, fulfilled, and they're going to keep you hydrated, and they're going to keep you feeling light and ready and energetic, which mm -hmm. is what you need during the summertime because, I mean, what, you're running around a lot, you're outside, you need foods that are going to hydrate you. And they also hit you with that little bit of that little sugar rush, a yeah. little bit of that natural sugar. Yeah, so that's going to get you moving. Running. Exactly. Keeps you moving. But uh, after this, we'll talk a little bit more. And actually, we'll bring up uh, some of the uh, weird, weird uh, ideas that are sitting in the FDA and the EPA and why, uh, you know, some of these CEOs are jumping back and forth between companies. But if you want to know what's wrong with the FDA in Monsanto, Tune in right after these messages. Here we are, five minutes past the hour, worldwide with Inform Nation Radio. Hello, welcome back. Welcome back to Inform Nation. We're talking about the FDA, Monsanto, the EPA, you know, government, politics. What's going on with these, uh, with these, these companies these lobbying against, you know, the FDA with congressmen and Monsanto and jumping jobs? And that's what it is. It's lobbying. That's what it, I mean, you know, you have Monsanto CEOs or board of directors going from the FDA and then coming back to Monsanto. I mean, how screwed up is that? I mean, is that, is that what you call corruption? I think that's what I just call fascism. You think, that, you think that's fascism? That's I think we talked about fascism, fascism the, last week. Yeah, exactly. That's just the corporatocracy coming in back into the government as a revolving door to guarantee their interests on corporate deals that they're making. They're using the government as a as an enforcement arm behind some of the deals that they need to make. So Monsanto, here we go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you the Wikipedia definition of what Monsanto is, and then, then I'll give you our idea about what uh, Monsanto is. Monsanto Company is a publicly traded American multinational agrochemical and agricultural biotechnology corporation. Holy moly, that is a long name for whatever that is. Headquartered in Creve Corrier, Greater St. Louis, Missouri. It's a leading producer of genetically engineered seed and the herbicide glyphosate. Glyphosate? Glyphosate, which, in market, which it markets under the Roundup brand. I so mean, weed killer. Weed killer. Pe pesticides. Pesticides, weed killer, that's what it is. And, um, you know, what they're that doing... Just like that GMO corn that we were talking about a little bit ago, okay. was that actually that they're taking the GMO corn mm -hmm. and they're genetically modifying it with Roundup Ready plants. So it's already growing its own pesticides. It's already growing its own pesticides inside the plant. How and, messed up is that? And you're eating the plant? Yeah. So it's supposed to kill the bugs that eat it, but when you eat it in mass quantities, you're not supposed to die. Or there no, or there, there's not supposed, there's not to, supposed be any, to be ailments. any problems. No, yeah. there's no side effects. Perfectly safe. But we, uh, don't, we don't need GMO labeling. You know, um, I, I was talking to someone the other day, and their their brother worked in is a doctor. Mm -hmm. And doctors don't get the the, the biggest nutritional um, 
I would say, courses when they're going for their doctorates. I would they say get doctorates from Martian. Pill peddlers. Yeah, they get they get like a semester in nutrition and everything, and then everything's pretty much reference for ailments to you know pharmaceutical drugs to give them the cure. It. And um, one of my friends was telling his brother, he goes, dude, he's like, it's common sense. He's like, think about a plant that has a pesticide already in it. He goes, and we ingest that. How much common sense does it take to say that GMOs are bad for the human body? How far off, how far off do you have to be in sheepland to actually think that a GMO could be good for you? Obama. That's all, <laughs> that's all I heard. Oh man. But I mean, I mean, realistically, I mean, you have, I mean, you're having drugs put into the plants now. By Monsanto, I mean, it says right here they're agrochemical. It's killing the bugs that eat it, mm -hmm. it and you're eating it in, in mass quantities. Yeah, and and, and they expect no cancers yeah. or anything from it. No problems. I mean, really, you see the mice with the really huge Monsanto. Tumors. You think you're just gonna pull the wool over our eyes like that? I mean, they get they get sued all the time for things like this. They get sued all the time. I think uh, what was it? Uh, Dupont was the company that came up with Agent Orange. Agent, you remember back in Vietnam? Du Dupont, if you know, let us in. Join the chat. There, you know what? I'm gonna look it up right here, really quick. Dupont and Agent Orange. Here we go. Because what it was was a chemical that they spread over the uh, the Vietnam, the Vietnamese during back in the Vietnam War. And actually, it was killing them off. Actually, giving them cancer and everything, and, and growing up with like altered bodies, altered minds, like being psychotic, having like weird limbs growing out, and having cancer and everything being very prevalent. And a lot of the women there, I think it was sixty to seventy percent of the women there actually had cancer. Uh, reason Ca being, caused infertility. Agent Orange is actually what they're like spraying on our foods now. Here we go. There we go. If you're uh, here we go. DuPont, yeah, Bayer, okay, DuPont, Bayer, Signature are all these companies and Monsanto is a corporation that all work together with these chemicals that they're spraying on everything. So you have DuPont, Bayer, like Bayer Drugs, everyone remembers Bayer Aspirin. It's one of the pharmaceutical companies. And then you also have Syngenta and BSA, BASF. I have no idea what that is. But they all work with Monsanto in coming up with these chemicals that they're going to put in your food. And that's killing us, but nobody's realizing it. I mean, how much does it take the average person, I guess I'd say, to, to get the common sense to actually look at the food that they're eating? I mean, what do you think? That's the big thing that we need to start doing is... Like, nobody's look, informed. Exactly. You're not, you're not hearing this information on the television. You're no. hearing, eat it, go buy it. And people that we need to come back to getting our own locally grown food, big co-ops, mm -hmm. and those big grow-ups in, in the area. Well, there's one in St. Charles, right? Oh, what's, yeah, it's called, what's uh, that one called Prairie Prairie Market. No, Heritage Prairie Market over on over in Oswego. It's a, it's a co-op. You can pay like $100 uh, for a whole year, and then what you end up doing is you go there and you buy your food every time. So you're going to get like organic lettuce, organic honey, honey shrubs, herbs, uh, milk, meat, dairy, Anything that you want, like that chicken. It's a local farm. It's a local farm. And then you could go there. You could see what they're doing. I mean, everything's from the farm. So those are some of the things that you need to be more of a part of. But like I was saying before, is I think we need to inform the public more on the foods that they're eating these days. I mean, because you're having Monsanto and you're having them lobbying into the FDA, into the EPA. The to control that, you're controlling the media. You're controlling the seeds that the farmers are planting? Yeah. They control the seeds. They control the seeds that these farmers have. So what ends up happening is the farmer, every year, because you know like how plants, I mean everyone knows how plants like drop seeds so they could be grow again next year. But what ends up happening is that Monsanto, they, they, GM the, they GMO, they GMO the seeds to make out. them, what is that called, uh, asexual or not asexual? Uh, it's the white seeds you see in like a watermelon. Okay, so you know, when you're eating not seedless, reproducing seeds. You know when you see seedless watermelon, there's like the white seeds in there? Yeah. And then when you see regular watermelon, there's the black seeds. There's the black seeds. The white seeds are the seeds that don't produce nothing. Oh, I didn't know they that, They GMO'd the seeds out of the watermelon. Oh. So you can't even grow take your a watermelon, watermelon. And you can't do it. So that's what, that's what ends up happening with the farm business these days. Exactly. Is that every year you have to go back to Monsanto and buy new seeds. Imagine how much money that is for the farmer. 
Imagine how much that's putting agriculture, and they all say it's putting small town farmers out of business. Because every year they're having to go back and spend more and more money on these seeds that Monsanto controls. Not to mention, I mean, since it is uh, 420 today, and a new article came out about how Monsanto now has chemically altered. They made GMO marijuana. They have made GMO and marijuana. And it's come out. And the weird thing is about it is that I think is that now it's becoming more in the public eye. Um, more people are using it for medicinal reasons. And you're actually having, um, you know, these shops and everything. I think in Chicago over here, we, yeah, have a couple, we have a couple of dispensaries now, right? I don't know where they are, but I know Illinois definitely did legalize uh, for, medicinal for medical reasons. reasons. Yes. So we're going to have dispensaries coming up. Over in Colorado, they legalized it. In California, it's, uh, what is it? It's, or in Washington, it's legalized too. And in California, it's in Colorado. Yeah, Colorado. It's medicinally, um, medicinally legal in California. But what ended up uh, happening is now I'm thinking that these, these companies like Monsanto are going to push these seeds towards these grow ops for marijuana now, and they're going to actually start indicating that, okay, well, now that we can control the marijuana, we'll now let you have it. Long as now That's it's been chem imagine. chemically already altered, now you can have it. They did the same thing with the alcohol. Before in prohibition, you can before prohibition people would be able to grow their own alcohol, you know, and and make their own alcohol, make a moonshine, mm -hmm. right? Bathtub gin. So after prohibition, they then when they made prohibition now legal again, where it's you can now have alcohol again. Mm -hmm. They now you have to go through the the government their little uh, their, you ways. Have to, you have to go through their little ways to, in order to make the alcohol, and they're going to do the same thing with the marijuana. So now they're controlling the seeds. It's okay. You can now grow, but you have to grow through only, us. Only these seeds of marijuana. You only can't grow whatever. Us too. Yeah, and the, the, maybe they won't drop any seeds, just like with the corn and other stuff like that. Yeah. They don't drop seeds. So now you can't take those seeds and go grow it yourself or grow it anywhere else you wanted to. See, that's a screwed up thing. I mean, like they're patenting nature. That's yeah. what it is. They're taking nature and they're patenting nature through these huge companies. And they're, and, they're, and they're funding, you know, FDA people, lobbyists, whatever. They, okay, what they really have is, like, say the board of directors, he now go works for Monsanto, and he pushes policies to actually, you know, help Monsanto out. Mm -hmm. Saying, oh, well, we could use this, or the um, definition for organic is it has to be under this percentage of this required amount. Yeah, has anyone ever re wondered why, I mean, or how much organic it actually says 100% uh, USDA organic? Yeah, like that, what's, what what's the barrier? Yeah, you know, the, the threshold you have to pass to be considered organic and non-organic. Yeah, there, non there, there is a threshold. There is a threshold, and I'm sure that they, um, you know, let's let's see here, non-GMO threshold. Here we go. You know, why don't you why don't you look this up, David? Here, really quick, non-GMO threshold. But there is this threshold now that between organic companies and non-organic companies that they have to intermingle with. So pretty much what they have to do is get their chemicals under that little barrier, and then it's finally organic, and they're like, okay, it's off to market. Now we have organic supplements, and we have organic uh, food and non-GMO, and we can market it. And guess what we could do? We could say that it's cage-free chicken, but it's just raised in a huge pen where they're all sitting together. It's cage-free. Yeah, it's true. It is cage-free because they're not individual cages. They're still in a cage. Where do you think they're putting them all? Yeah. You think they're just out there walking around cage free? No. Now they're in a giant pen, like a giant football field size, just open space, just crammed full of chickens, just chickens up up against each other, shoulder to shoulder. That's cage free. And and what they end up doing with it is now they're pumping in the antibiotics. Mm -hmm. So they're pumping the antibiotics into the food. And what ended up happening now is now they're sitting, here we go, uh, Food Inc. Uh, we're, you know, we're going to bring in a perfect example, the book Food Inc. Here we go. I got it. We got it sitting in front of us, everyone looking at it on the, on the podcast here. We have Food Inc., great book. It's got a documentary as well, too, if you don't feel like reading the book. But uh, the, the book is called, it's a New York Times bestseller, Food Inc., How Industrial Food is Making Us Sicker, Fatter, and Poorer, and What We Can Do About It. It's actually a really great read. It's a great documentary as well, too. If you want to know anything more about what we're going into right now, Food Inc. is like the epitome of what we're talking about right now. Yes. Food Inc. is the epitome of what we're talking about. 
Evolutionary Eating, Teresa, Teresa Nesbitt's book, another great research material. Yeah, I mean, this, this talks about kind of simply, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a simple way to understand. Mm -hmm. I, I love how this is actually put together on here. The reason being is because it's easy for everyone to understand. And that's why I like how Teresa put this book together, too. And a great book that I actually just got yesterday, too. It's actually, if anyone, you know, talking about making your brain better, it has a bunch of brain foods in here, too. And a little brain training tips is Making a Good Brain Great by Daniel G. Amen, M.D. Great book I was looking up. Talks about, like, a bunch of brain uh, tips. Actually, what I was talking about with the nuts, the salmon, and everything like that, eating for your brain health, you could find that in Making a Good Brain Great. I think I found the uh, 100%, the Organic 101. What does the USDA organic label mean? Let's figure out how much actually it means to be organic or not. Is it going to say in there? We're going to find out. But, um, do you have it up, or do you want me to? Uh, you want me to keep on going? Keep here? on going. I'm gonna. I'm gonna jump in with in with this later. Okay. So you know, one of my biggest problems is with the whole GMO idea, and, and why I want to bring this up on today's show is because a lot of people close to me have ailments or have sicknesses that are hurting us all. I feel like we all do. Everybody knows somebody that has that's sick. Yeah. I mean, we're we're all sick. I feel like in in a certain little way. You know, maybe our brain doesn't function how we want it to, or our body doesn't function, or we're over overweight, or having, you know, mood swings throughout the day, we're feeling tired early, we're not having the aggression in life like we used to. And I think we're all having, this, like, cancer. Like, cancer's like a big thing, like, for me, when people get cancer. Everybody knows somebody that either has cancer or has died from cancer. And we, all together out here, everybody we, need to really challenge this problem. We, we need, need to, to go start, to the root. And we need to go to the root of the problem to really change it because you're never going to change anything if you just keep putting a Band-Aid over it. If you just keep donating money to this charity, maybe it'll go away. It hasn't gone away yet. No. I feel like more people are getting it. Well, cancer is a huge industry for these pharmaceutical companies then. Oh, you know, yeah. They're, they're working with, like, like we said, the pharmaceutical companies are working with the food companies. Hi, like, just connect the dots. Connect the dots between that, your food's messed up, and it's making you sick, and they're giving you these drugs that aren't really working, and they're just taking away the symptom for a little bit. But anyways, when you know, we get back, you know, we're going to fully put the connections between the pharmaceutical companies and the food companies, because they're just two sides of the same coin. Yep. But uh, right after this, we'll be right back. Inform Nation, back at you, 24 minutes past the hour here worldwide. And here we are talking about what we can do to change the health of our family, our friends, our peers, you know, anybody around us that we really care about. And, you know, we are what we eat. And we, we want to be healthy, alive, energetic human beings. And we need living food for a living body. And so, I mean, this is, uh, this is the main topic of today's show. And here we go. We're going to talk a little bit about why, I, I don't know, it's a, it's a rough subject because it's sort of a passion of mine with the food and everything. And I'm coming really into this sort of field. I mean, I manage a GNC store and everything. And I'm really big into the nutrition and how your body works and these chemicals that we're constantly putting in it. And I have family members that have died from cancer. I have family members that have had strokes, had you know, multiple cases of cancer, um, family members that have um, like mental diseases. And I believe these are all derived from kind of what we're eating these days. And what I'd like to tell people, like I've had a, a family member have cancer and I've had my neighbor, uh, Summer, have cancer. And the one thing I can recommend for a lot of these people out there, um, just from my own knowledge and a lot of knowledge that I've looked up on the Internet, is go out there, if you have this happen or if you have a family member or a friend that this is happening to, and tell them to really look at their diet because that is the life force of our body. Because if we're not watching what we're putting in our mouth, we're liable to put anything in our mouth. We're liable to put chemicals and toxins into our body that are feeding these cancerous cells. And it's keeping our body in an acidic state is really what it is. And we don't want to be in an acidic state because we want to be in an alkali state. And the reason why we want to be in an alkali state is because, <clears throat> is because our bodies do a lot better um, breaking down cancerous cells in an alkalized state because cancer cannot thrive in alkalized. So acidic is where cancer thrives. And I have a chart in front of me right now, and I try to show this to everybody who 
Here, I'll even show David. I don't know if David's seen this chart before here. Oh, the pH scale? It's the pH scale, and it shows what foods are from the left spectrum, which is the acidic, to the alkali spectrum, which is on the, uh, on the right. And you could tell where modern-day society from this chart is headed. I mean, can you or can't, just by looking at it. Oh, definitely. Look, over here on the left, is it starts, the scale goes from 1 to 14. And... Yeah, the scale goes from 1 to 14. This, this, scale, scale, has three right to, this scale is 3 to 10, yeah. but the real scales go from, yes, three to, um, 1 to 14. So on the 1 is the most acidic, and 14 is the most alkalized. Al alkalized, or basic, or base, that's what it's called. Look over here on the 3. You got wine, liquor, beer, very acidic. Energy drinks. Yeah, energy drinks, 4. Burgers, hamburgers. Hamburgers and snacks, Donuts, five, pops, coffees. Yeah, donuts, coffees, water, little... Burgers and fries, uh, everything right here. Here we got five being, uh, what is that? Is that another beer, like a light beer? Maybe. That, that's like a light beer, like a Miller Lite. Coca-Cola, ice cream. Number six, we have, um, what is that, like another? Like a tea? Tea. Yeah, it looks like tea. tea. Yeah, we got tea. Chocolate. What is that? Chocolate. No, it's purified water is a six. Purified water is acidic. Look at regular water, tap water, seawater. Neutral, it's neutral. A seven. Alkalized. And everybody's go. drinking the purified water out the water bottles. But they don't know that it's acidic. Yeah. So like I was saying, and I was telling Todd a little bit before this, if you have like a sea salt, not a sea salt though, don't get the normal sea salt because it's just the normal processed salt and regular table salt. And don't drink seawater either. Yeah, don't drink seawater. Who knows <laughs> what's in that. But take a little bit of um, like a Celtic sea salt or real salt or a pink Himalayan salt or a black salt. There's a bunch of different variations out there. Take a little pinch of that, add it in your water, re-alkalizes the water, puts minerals back in it, and it'll bring up your energy during the day as well, too. And that's actually sitting at a 9, alkalized water, here we go, sitting at a 9 on the alkalized side. And then you have everything for like bananas, grapes, pineapple, it's just oranges. A lot, it's just all types of fruits. Yeah, and then the higher you even get it, it starts getting into more vegetables here. So avocados, we have avocados, asparagus. asparagus, and the list goes on and on. We go broccoli, seaweed, kale, radishes, collard greens, onions. Those are all very alkalized foods. And if we have a lot of those, it'll keep our body in balance, which our body in balance is about 7.14 on the alkalized um, scale. So if you want to go back to the chart again, seven is right where tap water is. So if you feel like, you know, keeping a balance between things, you're going to want to eat a majority of your diet alkalized mm -hmm. and part of your diet acidic. acidic. Because you can't have too much alkalization. You can't just go on the one extreme on this side because you'll probably have ailments over there. You'll probably stop producing as many hormones because you're not having meat. Meat produces hormones. Fat produces hormones. So you'll start losing your testosterone levels what if you would, go on too raw of a diet. What would meat be on this scale? <coughs> I didn't see anything. What would a meat be? Would it be uh, more think, like alkaline here we go. or yeah, acidic? It's, it's more acidic. Here we go. Um, milk actually on here. I mean, meat on here is... Where is it on here? Maybe it's not on here. I mean, we have fruits, juices, grains, eggs, cooked beans, lima beans, oats, barley, salmon... White bread, carbonated energy, cream cheese, pasta, beer. Here we go, pork. Number four. It's four on the acidic. Pork. Well, it's a burger there on four, too, so that's got to so be red meat. It, yeah, beef as well. It's got to be red meat, beef, beer. And these are all the things they tell you to stay away from. Like, if you're just looking at all these foods right here, these are all the things they're telling you, hey, don't drink as much pop. Don't eat all the the processed foods, fast foods, coffees, beer and wine. They're telling you not to stay, to, to stay away from these things. And over here at the alkalotic side, or the basic side, it's all the fruits, the vegetables, the alkalotic water. It's uh, all the leafy greens. It's the stuff they're telling you to and that's take. Why, and that's why you should be eating these things if you go in, and, and I can't say this enough, is that if you could bring up your body's pH level, you will feel better. You'll feel better, and your body will not be able to have cancer thrive in it. Cancer thrives in an acidic body. When you're eating all this crap all day, That's you're going to have an acidic body. You're going to produce cancer. It's not going to be able to fight itself off. Mm -hmm. And then what happens? Then you go get a radiation treatment, and then your white blood cells go down, and now your white blood cells are down, and you're still eating the same crap it's as you did before. The, and the pharmaceutical companies, which are tied into the GMO companies over here, are producing the, the 
the chemotherapy drugs that you're taking, and you're, you're, you're I don't know how to say it even better, but you're dying faster. You yeah. seen people on chemotherapy drugs, they look like they're sicker than normal people Yeah, with they're cancer. dying fat. Not to mention, I think the rate of when you actually get cancer again after chemotherapy is so high. And like... It, it might be, you might beat it the first time, but you're screwed the second time. Because yeah. what did you do? You didn't change the fundamentals. Go back to your basics, your fundamentals. Stop with the supplements. Stop with the, the diet. Stop with the supplementation. Stop with all Why of this. Why do you need that? You need the fundamentals. You Why? need the food. And I get supplements are there to help you along the way, but you need the food. You know, everyone comes into me and says, well, what can I take for this, this, this? I'm like, well, what are you eating? What is the first, what is the first thing? I could give you these things, and of course they'll help you on the way, but what are you eating? Because I, I you're eat, just going to resort back to what you were before if you didn't do this. And most people are, what are you eating? You're eating that normal American modern lifestyle. Acidic. Acidic. It's acid. It's just eating away at your life. And that's it, what it might as well be. You might as well look at the left side of the spectrum and say that eats away at your life. And just, and just go on that. I mean, if you want to eat something that's going to eat away at your life. I mean, I have people in my family that can't eat cancer and everything. I'm like, well, why don't you eat a better diet? And they don't. Why? Because it's so hard. It's so ingrained in their minds. They have and to, it like, frustrates me. I mean, have I'm sorry if I'm getting all worked up right now, but it's true. Hey, you're passionate. And this is a passionate subject we're talking about. This is coming back to the core level of being yourself, being an individual, is having that ability to make the choice between healthy and not healthy foods. And everybody's just being bombarded with not healthy foods all around them all day long. And they're, they are making the food, the healthier foods, more expensive, which your normal American on the type of income that's going on in America today can't afford to live fully on these foods. Because, you know, the lower classes, I guess you can call them, can't afford most of these foods. They afford these ones. They afford the acidic side. The acidic, the cheap, the quick foods. You know, one of my friends would... Uh one of my friends, one of my colleagues would say that the reason they're doing that is because they want to hurt out the people. They want to hurt out the people that don't go out there and buy the better foods and everything. They want to go after the people that are being ignorant. Look at the, the what's it called, the uh, Georgia Guidestones we talked about last week. The, what does the first thing say? Keep the population below 500 million people. Yes. And then also, it also says fitness and everything and then, being a good, like one of those high, what is, I think it's the second one. Yeah. Fitness and health. Living yeah. up to fitness and health or something yeah, like that. Yeah, or something like that. And I mean, that's, that's where we're headed, but then a lot of people are getting herded out right now. I mean, I, that's horrible to say. And I get that that's horrible to say, but we all have decisions to make. We all have choices. We all have that individual free choice. And, and the thing is, is, if you think about this, in today's dollar or today's economy, we spend a lot less on food than we ever have. Food long time ago was one of the main things that we paid for because it was one of the main staples in our life. And now today we're paying like a couple percentage points of what we were paying before. So we're paying like two or three percent for our food now when before it used to be forty percent of our meal salary. cost a buck instead of however <clears throat> many because you're paying for a little burger a buck. Yeah. You're not paying for a meal. And the and the thing is with that is that if we just took that money that we're making, we put it more towards food, we'd have a better brain, like I said before. You, you're, you'll eat better, you'll think better. I promise you that. I've done it myself. I've done Actually, in the last week, I've been like on top of my game. I've been waking up in the mornings. I've been taking a cold shower. I get in the shower with the normal, you know, warm water running. And at the end, I've actually been lasting a little bit longer, close to a minute now, just standing in the cold water, putting it on my face, putting it on my chest, my elbows, all your joints and everything, getting everything cooled down so the inflammation goes down your body. It all brings the blood back into you because your, your blood cells are restricting everything, so it's bringing everything back in. And then once you get out of the cold water, everything's warm, and you get in your warm robe or your warm towel, it brings the blood back out. So cold showers in the morning are great. Then I automatically chug about 10 to 12 ounces of water right in the morning. Right out of the purifier, I drink the cold water, I down that really quick. Then I go make my tea, and I put a little bit of honey in my green tea. Nice. And then what I'll do after that... Your is, organic, non-GMO green tea? Yes, it's actually from Japan. Ooh. Yes. Uh, Japan's really big on the teas over there, like China and Japan. They're really, I think, like, the fundamentals of tea were like... Yeah, it's like their culture. Yeah. And then, so I'll do that. Then I go to work, 
and I'll drink more water and I always add salt in it, either the pink Himalayan or my Celtic sea salt and I'll add salt into it. I'll be drinking about a gallon, about a gallon of water a day, maybe a little bit more because it keeps my energy up. I've noticed like lately I've been lower on the caffeine, high on the water, high on the salt in the water, feel way better. And then I'll even have, um, you, you know, like drained feeling. No, I don't feel drained. Like I'll feel like a little bit like, oh, I'm feeling a little bit slower. Oh, I'm just drinking a lot of water. Dude, I feel like up again. It's like it starts bringing the freshness to your cells again. Like, okay, I feel great. Speaking of water, one, I'm out. Here, you can have some of my water over here. There you go, friend. Thank you. There, no problem, friend. I always want to keep you hydrated. It's always stay hydrated. But, um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but so, you know, so I do that. And then what I'll do during my day is I'll go over to Caputo's. It's um, a grocery store. But they have a lot of fresh food there as well, too, which I like. Uh, a lot of locally grown fresh food as well, too. And I'll get like these organic uh, leafy green salads, like uh, these greens that grow in the springtime, because like I said, you want to eat with the seasons, foods that are prevalent in the season. So I'll get these spring salads, and I'll get a natural organic like vinaigrette or um, olive oil base, like Italian dressing. Mm -hmm. And I'll put that on, Ooh. yeah, it's, it's quite tasty. And I'll cook up myself some organic chicken. I might have some vegetables with it too. And I'll eat that during my day. And that's awesome, man. I like you don't feel sluggish afterwards. Really? You feel a lot more energy. You feel a little bit more spiritually awakened. You got like that rhythm about you, just like, yeah, it's man, like I got some more energy today. Back. You feel like your life force is back. And what I do even before I eat that meal is you're supposed to drink another thing of water to kind of get your digestive system ready, get your saliva glands going because your saliva is the per first part of digestion. So you want to make your food liquid. So you, this is what they say. They say Drink your food and chew your liquid. Drink your food and chew your liquid. It's a bit Reason of a be mind bender. Right I know, there. it's a little bit of a mind bender, but what it is is when you, you're chopping down, you want to turn your food into like liquid because you want to get your saliva all over your food because that's the first enzymes that start hitting the food and starts breaking it down so your body can fully digest it in your stomach. Actually, I know something about that. When, you know when you, whenever you make a, eat a cracker, just mm -hmm. a plain unsalted cracker, you ever chew it for a little while? It starts tasting sweet. It's because this, in your saliva, there's that, that uh, what's it called? Like in a, drawing a blank there's, on there's the an name. Enzyme the enzyme, bam. And that, uh, it's called salivary amylase. Okay. And it d dissolves carbohydrates into sugars. Right in your mouth. Right in your mouth. Oh, okay. That's quite interesting. So as you're chewing it, that's why they say to chew carbs more. Because it breaks down the carbs fully into sugars. Okay. And that's what's being stored as fat is the sugar. Yeah. And that's why they're staying away from the carbs. Okay, that's pretty interesting. I actually never knew that about, what is it called? Salivary amylase. Salivary amylase. Okay, I didn't know that one myself. But, um, so you want to chew your, I mean, drink your food and chew Dude, your water. How do you do that? You just, what you want to do is you want to stick um, with your chewing rate about 20 to 30, even 40 chews sometimes, depending on like what you're eating, of course. Mm -hmm. But like if you notice like the other day we went out, we got a nice prime rib and everything. Oh. You have to chew the meat a lot longer. And like if you ever notice the difference between real food chewing and like chewing a potato, potato chip, chip, how long can you chew the potato chip? Three or four times, and no, 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 you're done. It's already broken up. There's like it's disgusting after the first couple of chews. Yes, and then when you and then you chew food, like a real food, you can feel it. Like it, you're you breaking break it down, it really down. Yeah, that's and that's kind of the difference between real food and having like some like I don't even know food. I don't not, we don't even call food. It's call just frank, some stuff. Franken food. Franken food. Just some stuff you put in your mouth that supposedly makes you feel better, but makes you feel worse. But so you're gonna wanna you know chew everything down, get the saliva all over it. And swallow it then because you'll have a lot better bowel movements and everything. Your body will be able to break down, absorb the nutrients and everything in the food a lot more. And then with your water, you want to chew it like, um, you know, like you're chewing like this. I like, like I'm moving my mouth and I'm moving my teeth up and down, like swishing it through your mouth. I like getting it all around my. Yeah, tongue. like people ask me, like, what do you do? Taste your, like, let's close my eyes, taste all the flavors. Like people ask me, like when I when I do like water or something, like I just don't don't gulp it down. Like people just gulp like water down. Like I have this thing yeah, where I like I, do that. I like, filter like through my teeth and like back around. It's like a cycle, like a little water cycle. But that actually is what? better. That's better to bring your. That's actually better to digest the liquids in your mouth because it fully engages. It rushes. It rushes that water or it rushes that you know whatever you're drinking juice or whatnot. You no, know, that could be a good thing for salivary. That could be a good thing for teeth. You know, it always like brings that water around your teeth in between. Yeah. You know, constantly flushing it out. Yeah. Getting away from the plaque. Instead of just like chugging the water down. 
because if you're chugging water, it like cools your stomach more. I'm gonna try that out. In your mouth, here we go. Here, let me, here, we'll do this live in, live in the studio here, here. This is what it sounds like to like chew your water. Yeah, everyone hear that? Like you wanna like kinda swish it around like a little bit. That's what you wanna do with your water. Dude, my, so, mouth, my mouth feels cleaner. You're, right? Dude, that's how I drink my, liqu my liquids, but everyone makes fun of me for drinking my liquids that way. I don't know why, but whatever. But yeah, so you want to break all that down. So you want to chew your food, and you want—I mean, you want to uh, drink your food, chew your water, and that's how you're going to get a lot better digestion and everything during your day as well, too. But what do we want to do? I know we're coming up on our homework segment here. What do we want? You know what? Let's let's do something like organically this week around. I mean, if anyone has yeah. any, if anyone has any uh, ideas for our homework segment this week. Call directly into the studio, 630-445-1213. Or, you know, chat with us on the chat room here. It's just been me and Barry in the chat. What's up, Barry? How you doing? How you doing, Barry? And Barry's Todd. like, Barry, I love Barry. And Chip out there. Barry, what's Barry? What's, her, what's Barry's last name again? Barry Kroger. Barry Kroger. Okay, Barry cool Kroger. Guy? You know, Barry, I want to talk to you. I like what you're talking about in the chat. I like, uh, I like what you're thinking. You should call in and talk to us on the show about, uh... Like what is Monsanto everyone? Like what is everyone eating out there? Like what are you eating, Barry? Like what yeah. is what is what is everyone eating these days? And that's what and that's what we want to hear from. And what do we, I think I want to do for the homework segment this week is I'd like to give people the assignment of having an organic meal and seeing how they feel afterwards, or having like one day, one day drink lots of water. Here I'm gonna even write this down. I'm gonna write this down for everyone. Drink lots of water. You're gonna eat greens. You're going to have a lean meat. Now, the lean meat could either be, it could be chicken, it could be fish, it could be turkey. Uh, any other lean meats you could think of off the top of your head, David? I mean, I can't no, I think, think of too many. Like basic lean meats. Chicken, fish, turkey. If you have any other ideas for lean meats, um, let me, veal lean meat. It's veal lean meat. Veal's very lean, right? I don't know about the way they raise the veal, but. Talk about food, Inc. Yeah, it's about food, but there you go. I'll throw that one on there. Veal, too, for all you veal lovers. Veal's pretty tasty, though. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie about that one. Um, but, yeah, so do that. So you're going to drink lots of water. Try to take your body weight, times it po by 0.66, and that's how many ounces of water you're going to drink. So two-thirds of your body weight, that's how much water you should drink in a day. And about an average 200-pound male is going to drink, drink about a gallon beyond. a day. Again, it's like 130. I'm not sure about female. I don't know. Look, we should look that up. What, for fe well, it all depends on just your body weight. So, I mean, say average, what, female, 130, 140 pounds or something like that? About a half a gallon. Know. But after this, we'll go into uh, what exactly we want the homework assignment to be, and we'll uh, talk about what this whole series is that we're going to have on uh, nutrition, wellness, and you and are what, what you, you eat. Hello, here it's Inform Nation Radio. Do you think I forget about the British accent segment today? Hello, Governor. Greetings. We're coming out here today, rocking the world here. Cheers. Over at 24.7 The Stream here on 420, man. Rock on, everybody. It's Monday. <laughs> Get all loosened up there, everybody. Chill out. Let's put some Bob Molly on today. And we'll just follow, you know. Soldier. <laughs> I like Bob Marley. He's good. Damn, rest in peace. Yeah, rest in peace, Bob Marley. 420, shout out to you. It should have been your birthday. <laughs> That'd be funny, right? But, um, you know, what we want to talk about here at the end, so the homework assignment for the week is going to be take a day, eat some good food, and, you know, I'm going to keep David to this one as well, too. Okay. I'm going to keep you to this one. I'll make a word. I'll make a pact with everybody out there. I'm going to do the week challenge. For next Monday, if you do the week challenge for next Monday. Well, David's going to do it no matter what. And you I'm, a man, I'm a man of my word, so we're going to come back. At least gonna... one day, lots of water, no pops, no energy drinks, no processed foods. No pops, that's good. No okay. grain. Okay. Lean meats, vegetables, and fruits. What do you think about it? And adding salt to your water. I'm going to do it. Are you going to do the I'm cold shower do, in the morning, too? I've already been doing the yeah, cold shower David in the has morning. been doing the cold shower in the morning, too. It's just, we'll just you, throw that one in there. You it, guys don't have to do that one if you want, but I'm telling you, it is awesome. You feel, you, it, you feel like reborn. Yeah, invigorated. After, yeah. You know what you're looking for? Invigorated. Invigorated, right? yeah. You yeah. just come back like, ah. 
Oh, I got the finger back at me. I feel so good today. And you like start humming and stuff. Like I get out of the I'm like, woo! Yeah. I'm I'll, like, yeah. I'm, I'm like, let's get this day going. Every time. Like, where are the tunes at? Like, I just need like like a tune for like my day. I like, you ever like just like want like some background music for your day going like, if on? I had my own theme music. Yeah, if you have your own theme music, that kind of read your mood for the day and give you awesome theme music. You're just kind of walking around. You got this theme music like following you, and you're just like rocking out, kind of like dancing down the street and everything. Kind of just goes to your mood. But um, eating your apple or something because you know you're on the non-GMO. Or you're <laughs> you're thinking, and it's like do do do. No, that. But um, no, we want to. Uh, we're gonna do the day of eating good, feeling good, seeing how our brain works on those days. So that's gonna be the homework segment of the week. Dave, you know you can't do that. You gotta that's tell Todd, Todd over here when you take the thing out, it makes the weird noise. Todd, can you? You know what, can Todd? You, can, can you come you, over here and slap this man? Can you mute the thing up? There we go. We're back. Okay. So are we? Uh, here we go. We're going to play the uh, the old uh, homework music here. That's true. We're going back to school. Back to school. Back to school. To, to prove to, to my daddy, daddy I'm, I'm not a fool. I got There's my shoes tied tight. My lunch packed up. I hope and I don't get in a fight. fight. Yeah. <laughs> He's always, he's always, <laughs> he's always love snack packs. All right, here we go. Back to school. Homework for the week. Oh my God, David! You know what? This is live, okay? And David's messing up over here, like horribly. He's pulling the thing out. There we go. Oh, Back okay, to there school. we go. Back to school time. Back to school. Jeez. All right. Dave. So our homework assignment of the week. Dave, why don't you tell everyone what's to be? Since you're gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. You know what? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna do it too. I, I do it a lot though. So I'm gonna go with the whole better lifestyle. I'm gonna be drinking more water. I'm going to be eating more greens. Leafy greens as well? Leafy greens, broccoli, carrots, colorful. Oh, okay. How about cauliflower? I'm a, cauliflower ca I'm a cauliflower fan. fan. Cauliflower's fine. If you eat cauliflower, broccoli, you might get a little little of the farts. Hey, that's, a, that's it, all it happen, right. It happens with a lot of the Hey, we're, we're in the Windy City, so it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing, okay, I'm eating lean meats. Yep. And that's going to be turkey, chicken. Fish. 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 Veal. Veal. You could do some shark. Um, shark? I've never had it. Yeah, I had shark the other day. It was, uh, it's, it's like fish. It's okay. like fish. Okay. Um, and, uh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to change. I'm going to do the, the week challenge lifestyle change. See how you feel. Because, no, I need it. I think it's, it's come time. You, you know, know winter. You I'm coming out of winter. I'm like, I've been in that hibernation mode, that yeah. lazy mode a little yeah. bit. I'm going to come out and make it springtime. Mm -hmm. The weather's getting warmer. I'm going to come out and I'm going to change myself for the summer. For, my, for life, not for just the summer. There we go, a little lifestyle change right there. So uh, what we want to uh, finish off here is we kind of want to let you know what's going to be coming up on the next few uh, shows, episodes, podcasts, whatever you want to call them, uh, live shows. Here we are. We're going to have some special guests in the studio. Uh, we're going to make a series kind of about, and the series is going to be called You Are What, what You Eat. Uh, it's a series, so if you want to find us on YouTube, watch the podcast. We're going to be having people in the studio. Uh, we're going to be giving you book uh, book suggestions, documentary suggestions to watch, kind of help you get in tune for the summertime. You know, summer's coming right around the corner. We're still in spring. We're in that spring awakening coming around. Let's change our lifestyle mode. So we're going to give you some uh, literature, some ideas. We're going to get some special guests in here. I'm going to try to get my mentor, Teresa Nesbitt, in here yes. for a nice little interview. I'll try to get in uh, Anthony uh, Macchiotti for Rock Your Health. Uh, he's got another show on here. He's, uh, he does bio scans and he's a, he's a great show. He I does mean, things like that, actually. I, I heard a couple of his episodes. I like it. Yes, yes. And uh, so we're going to get him on here talking about health, nutrition. And you know what? Maybe I could, uh, you know, maybe I'll give a little shout out to Troy out there in California. Maybe we could get him in on the phone. And talk Troy a little Casey, bit. Yeah, the health yeah, certified, certified health, health, health nut. I'll give, uh, I'll give him a shout out, see if he wants to be on the show. We'll push that yeah. one. We'll push that one hard. He's pretty big out there. And you know what? We'll look in we'll look into further some other maybe guests that we could have either call in, give us a little ten minutes if, of their time. If you know a good guest or a good speaker, whatever, that you want to hear on this show, you think that this person's gonna bring great knowledge and you want it out there, let us know. We want to talk to this person too. Yeah, let us know. Send it to uh, the email informnationlive at gmail.com. That's informnation live at gmail.com. And always remember that you can always call into the studio 
and recommend us stuff. Yeah, you can always recommend us topics. Like, throughout this week, any topics on nutrition. Like, if you throw us your questions right now, like, if you send in emails or you put it on our Facebook or you send us a message anywhere where Inform Nation is, you can send us a message and we'll bring up your question, everyone's question. Anybody, I'll promise you this. I'll make a promise right now. Anybody that puts out a question, a valid question, you know, not like, I mean, like, everything's really valid, I guess. <laughs> like, but, I mean, like, you know, a good question out there, everyone's question, we'll answer it in the next couple episodes with our special guests. We'll give you their input on it. And, you know, you could either call into the studio, you could send us an email, put it on our Facebook, Inform Nation, on uh, Facebook, Inform Nation Live at Facebook. What are, you, what are you looking at there, David? I'm looking at what Barry just said. What's Barry saying? Here? Kathy Baldwin? Kathy Baldwin. She knows about, she knows food. I'm going to definitely look her up. Kathy Baldwin. Let me write this one down here. We're already, we're already getting suggestions, suggestions in here. But yeah, if you guys have any like questions about your nutrition, your health diet, any sort of things you want us to research into or get like a professional's take on it, Especially give us a when, call. Like, when, when Teresa comes in here. Oh, when Teresa comes in here or Anthony Thank too, just, just fill up the lines. Please. Fill up the lines because these people are geniuses in their field. And even if it's something, if you think it's just for you, don't because there's somebody else out there that is also thinking the exact same thing. So when you're coming up with your question or something, everybody's going to be able to benefit from it. Oh, yeah. So, you know, take a, take a leap of faith for everyone else out there. Yeah. There you go. Tie it back in the Don't let episode. they hold you back. Yeah, take a leap of faith. You know, throw your question out there. You know, don't feel ridiculed. If you want to make it anonymous, you can make it anonymous, too. We don't have to shout out to your name. If you want to put out your name, uh, you know, we can do that, too. And actually, you know what? I'm going to give an offer out. It's the first. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this offer out. First time. First time we're doing this. First time offer. The best question. Oh. The best question that is asked throughout these next couple episodes. If you you have to send it in either Facebook, the email, or call, or call in, in or the, the chat room. and give us your information. The best question. I will personally send to your address a thirty dollar gift card of your choice. A thirty dollar gift card of your choice sent out to the best question. That's $30 either you want it. If you want it on a Visa, American Express Visa card, if you want it on a Best Buy card, a Panera, Starbucks, a Starbucks, Star Starbucks, any place you want, $30 of your choice it will be sent to your address for the best question. That's what we'll do. Okay. And we'll have a couple different I'm, voters on the question, too. I, yeah, exactly. We'll, we'll maybe sit down with a couple of these, these people and say, well, which, what are these questions really brings in the spectrum of a couple of different things? We'll, we'll judge it on a couple of different things. We'll decide on that. Yeah. But I just came up with that right now. I, like I promise you the $30. So, so email us. The, okay, let's go over the email. Let's go over all the ways for everyone to contact us with these questions. Our business cards? Yeah, well, of course, our business cards, too. <laughs> And that's for and that's for anybody that we hand out our business cards to. But if you're not around us, we're of course not handing you our business cards. But you can go to our Facebook, and that's Facebook.com. You can call in and request a business card. Okay, yeah, we'll send you one with the thirty dollar <laughs> gift card, and uh, yeah, we'll send you our business cards. They look pretty cool. And um, so uh, what we'll do is uh, you either have Facebook to contact us. That's Facebook.com slash. Information Live. That's so if you want to know how to spell Information, it's I N F O R M N A T I O N Live. Yes. L I V. Information Live. Yeah. Information Live. Facebook.com slash Information Live. Or if you want to send it to our email, that's Information Live at gmail.com. All of them are going to be Information Live. And then what are the what are the other one? Oh yeah, or if you want to call in the studio. At 630-445-1213. Or if you want to join us live here in the chat room. Yeah, or if you want to join us in the chat room. Now, we're going to need um, your name and your email to get back to you. That's if you send in a question, give us your name and email. So we could get in touch with you or give us your phone number so we could call you. We're not going to sell your information. We're not. We promise we won't sell we, your information. We preach against all we, that yes, stuff Don't here. worry about it. I don't give out my... Actually, it was at, what, it was at the place yesterday. <laughs> In a jump rope. Yeah. And the guy, I'm like filling out this contract for this $6 jump rope. 
I'm like, he's printing out, like, out of the printer this one receipt. He's clipping the other receipt to it. He's asking for my address and my email and everything. And it's at this place called Second Win, Second Win Exercise Equipment or something like that. Yeah, and, like, and I'm like, with. I'm like, I asked the guy, I'm like, dude, it, it's like a $6 jump rope. What do you need all this for? He's like, well, you know, if I if you have to bring back the jump rope or anything like that, if there's any problems, I'm like, dude, it's a $6 jump rope. I don't need a warranty. I'll buy a new one if yeah. the jump rope breaks. Like... So that's what we'll do. I think that'll be interesting. I think uh, maybe we'll get some uh, excitement out of everyone for this. Teresa Nesbitt's going to be on here. Anthony Macchiotti. We'll look into uh, Kathy Baldwin as well, too. But next week is going to be... Let's see who we can get on next week. It'll yeah. be a mystery. Stay in tune with us on our social media networks, and you'll know who's going to be on for next week's Inform Nation. Remember, you are what you eat. This is Alex and David. Hello. With Inform Nation Goodbye. Radio. We'll be back next Monday, 2 to 4 p.m. But everybody, have a great Monday. Peace, love, and please, eat healthy this week. You are what you eat. Living food for a living body. Remember it. I think that's a good show. One second, I think we pitter-patter when we smoked. Oh, shit. That's still on camera. That's only for the podcast.